Oh boy, it's that time. Here we are again, folks. What arrived today is something extremely, extremely rare that probably no one who watches my videos has ever seen before. So, we're gonna have a quick little bit of fun today unboxing this madness. <laughs> or at least, I'm gonna have some fun. I don't know about you guys, but hey, we're gonna try. We're gonna give it a crack, all right? Let's go. This is a 1996 Gibson M3 All-American. Damn, boy, he's thick! Boy, that's a thick-ass boy! Damn! Despite being the best design after Gibson's multiple attempts to launch a super strap model in the 90s, the M3 ultimately didn't stick in the marketplace simply due to the fact that the music trends at the time were changing. Virtuosic shredding was being phased out, as grunge, alternative rock, and the 90s punk scene were being ushered in. Guitars that were specifically built with shredders in mind were also phased out, as you can imagine, since genres, such as grunge for example, catered specifically to less technically demanding musicians who asked less of their instruments. In regards to this specific model, the M3 All-American was only produced in a ridiculously tiny number in 1996, and then they were all sold in 1997. The exact number of how many was made is unknown. I absolutely couldn't find any info online whatsoever on any forums or websites. But looking at the serial number of the one that I have in my hand right now, it was clearly made in 1996 in Gibson's Nashville factory. So let's go through a quick rundown of the specs on this incredibly unique guitar. Starting with the body, we have a basic mahogany slab body. I mean, realistically, what else would you expect from Gibson? And the wood is cut in the fairly recognizable M3 body shape. Moving on to the neck, we have a 24 fret maple neck that is set into the body, topped with an ebony fretboard and 24 medium jumbo frets. Now the neck profile on this thing is a really, really thin D-shaped profile, more akin to what you'd see on an Ibanez or some other big brand shredder guitar at the time. Realistically feels like it's a 19 millimeter to 21 millimeter neck, but it could even be thinner than that, I don't know. I mean, the profile's a thin D-shape, but it's not that super flat thin that a lot of Ibanez players I'm sure are used to. Both the shape of the neck profile and the neck thickness is just so unique coming from Gibson. I would have never expected something like this to be on a Gibson guitar. On the M3 models, there is virtually, well, almost, almost no neck heel, just because of how the neck is set into the body, which is what contributed to the M3 models being known for just incredibly great playability. As we work our way up the neck, we arrive at the headstock. Now the headstock shape was uniquely designed just for this specific model. You won't see this headstock shape on any other Gibson model. The tuners are Steinberger's gearless 40 to 1 ratio locking tuners. And what makes these so incredibly unique is that they have no tuning peg coming out of the headstock. So it just gives a very aesthetically clean, somewhat minimalistic look to the headstock of the guitar. Let's go back to the body and look at the rest of the hardware. The bridge is a Steinberger jam trim, an original design from the 90s that wasn't even featured on many Steinberger guitars at the time. Now the Steinberger jam trim is an incredible piece of hardware for guitars. I'm going to be doing an entirely separate video giving a thorough rundown and detailed description of the jam trim and what it does. But to give you guys the shortest possible summation, the jam trim is a basic guitar tremolo system, but when you swing the arm all the way back, the bridge automatically locks itself and becomes a fixed bridge. If you swing the tremolo arm all the way forward, it becomes a tremolo again. Swing it all the way back and the bridge automatically locks and becomes a fixed bridge again. For pickups, as you can see, we have three humbuckers, two Gibson 496Rs and a Gibson 500T in the bridge. These two pickup models are the hottest, highest output in-house pickups that Gibson offers to this day. Looking at the controls, we have a basic master volume knob, master tone knob, and a five-way blade pickup selector, so you do have options in regards to what combination of pickups are selected and active at any given time. In addition, to make this guitar more tonally versatile, the master tone knob operates as a push-pull coil split, so if you pull it up, the pickups are split. I couldn't tell you which ones are split because I simply couldn't find that information anywhere online. I couldn't even find a schematic of the wiring for this thing from the factory. But you pull up the master tone knob and the pickups are coil split. You push it back down and you have three full humbuckers again. So with the five-way pickup selector blade plus the coil split on the master tone knob, you have a total of 10 possible combinations for sounds that you can get out of this thing. And let's say I were feeling adventurous. I could always wire this thing differently to get even more possible combinations. Like I could do 
multiple coil splits or coil taps or wire in a mini toggle to run in series or parallel. Obviously this thing has enough options right now, but I'm just saying, like, let's say I were feeling adventurous, the options are out there to rewire the guitar. And I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I think we've covered everything. The body, the bridge, the controls, the pickups, the neck, the fretboard, the headstock. Yeah, I think that's everything on this extremely rare 1996 Gibson M3 All-American. This guitar is just a total holy grail for me. Like, this is just one of, personally, my most sought after guitars that I've been looking for for a while. And go figure, I just coincidentally stumbled upon one. Of course I had to jump on it and purchase it. But I'm just so excited to finally own one. So if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna cut this video short, get to playing this thing and giving it a tone test. Make sure you keep an eye out for this guitar in some of my future videos. And of course, like I said, I'm gonna be doing a separate video devoted just to giving a thorough rundown of the Steinberger Jam Tram explaining what it is and how it works. Thank you so very much for watching this video and for sharing in this incredible unboxing experience for me through the magic of internet voyeurism, am I right? Until next time, remember to be kind to everyone, and most importantly, remember to be kind to yourself. Take care, everyone.